So do it that way. Answer the question. If it's asking for the cause, you can say one cause of the French Indian War was blank. It's easy. That's an easy way to do it. Okay. And here's where it gets tougher. Citing evidence using specific, specific examples. Okay. Use your vocab. The reason why we make you do so much vocabulary in this class is because of ACE. I want you to be able to pull a response and pull something from your vocab that helps you answer the question. One thing I want to point out here is you do not quote anything. If you get a primary source document that's text, do not quote. The readers for AP have been trained to ignore quotes. So they'll just ignore it. And if I see it, I'll just scratch it out because it doesn't count. You have to provide um, a key term on your own. Okay. You have to use something. Usually they ask you to use something that's outside of what they've provided for you. Okay. And the easy way to do this is just to write for example, and then give me your example. It sounds really simple because you have four minutes to do this part, four minutes. So you got to be quick. The explain is where students usually have the problem. You must connect your example to your answer. Okay, an easy way to do this is to write as a result, explain how your evidence supports your answer. Okay. All right, any questions on that? We're going to do an example. We're going to practice. The ACE strategy is very important. You do this, once we started using this strategy, our short answer scores and our essay scores went up exponentially. Because if you're doing this, you are going to get credit for the short answer and the uh, essay later on. Are we good on this? Um, this PowerPoint, by the way, is already posted, so you should, you'll have your own copy of this, okay? All right, so this is all or nothing. If you mess it, mess it up, you don't get credit, don't get credit for it, okay? Um, the short answer question could be the difference between a two and a three, a three and a four, four and a five. So it's all or nothing. If you don't do the full ace, you don't get the point. All right, so question number one is always going to be argumentation. It's always going to be two historians arguing over a topic. And they usually have opposite views. And it's almost always going to be on something major, like you know the American Revolution, the New Deal during the Great Depression, uh, World War II, it's going to be a major topic, okay? but it only is going to be from periods three through eight. So 1754, which is the French Indian War, through the election of Reagan. All right, so let's, let's look at one. Here is what you might see, and I'm going to read this to you. I know you may or may not like that, but I'm just going to do this just for the sake of practice here. All right, so the first historian says, the Columbian Connection had a devastating effect on the indigenous human societies of the Americas. New disease vectors suddenly introduced into the vulnerable populations of the new world began a sequence of horrific pandemics. Rapidly spreading infectious disease devastated indigenous peoples of the new world. It thinned their numbers, destroyed their institutions, and broke their resistance to Spanish aggression. Demographic recovery after major pandemics was hindered by reduced fertility, stillbirths, and other physical effects, as well as by cultural depression, homelessness, and malaise resulting from Spanish colonial domination. Okay, so that's one perspective. As you're reading these, you should think about what's the main idea of these uh, paragraphs. The second historian, or historians, there's two here, the New World provided soils that were very suitable for the cultivation of a variety of old world products. The increased supply lowered the prices of these products significantly, making them affordable to the general population for the first time in history. The production of these products also resulted in large flows, sorry, lar in large inflows of profits back to Europe, which some have argued fueled the Industrial Revolution and the rise of Europe. The old world gained access to new crops that were widely adopted. The improvement in agricultural productivity had significant effects on historic population growth and urbanization. Okay. So what major topic is are both of these paragraphs covering? Something that is very, very important. 
especially from the summer assignment. They don't actually specifically say it, they, they kind of hint around it. So what's the topic? It's actually a vocab term. Columbian exchange. Yes, perfect. Now they notice how they don't say it. They say the Columbian connection. You know, they and the second one doesn't even reference it at all. It just talks about the flow of things back and forth. Okay, so they may not say the term, but you know it's Columbian exchange. So here's what I want you to do on your piece of paper. I only want you to answer question A. Briefly explain one specific historical difference between Richard's and Nun and Kian's interpretations. So A is always going to be, what's the difference between these two guys' arguments? Okay, and so I'm going to give you, I'm going I'm to tell you when it's been five minutes, and then I'll let you guys answer A, okay? So go ahead and write your response to just A, and then we'll talk about it. If you need me to go back to the paragraphs, I can. All right, Jimmy, put the paragraphs back on. Okay, there are the paragraphs. Remember, you're telling me what's the difference between Richards and what Nan and Kian said. And remember to do ace, answer the question, provide an example. Now, since there's two guys, you're going to have to give me two examples or, or, or at least tie the two together.
All right, it's been five minutes. Anybody want a little bit more time? I'll take another minute or so. Okay, I'll give you another minute or so to, to finish up your thought there. All right, let's uh, let me. I'm gonna share with you uh, my response. I came up with a couple options. Um, let's see if you guys. And after I read these, I want you to think uh, if you if you think you got the point or not. Okay. All right. So we're doing just A. So here's one option. Okay. And I wrote it out in an ACE format. Okay. Richards has a very different view of the Columbian Exchange than Nan and Kian. Okay. Richards argues the negative effects of the Columbian Exchange. Well, now can I explain the positive effects? Okay, so here I went negative positive. That was my direction here. Notice how in the C, I didn't give, I guess Columbia Exchange would count as my vocab term, even though I use it again in A also. That's fine. This one's going to be a, always a little different because you're comparing historical um, arguments. Okay, here's where your point comes in. E, Richards discusses how the Columbia Exchange has harmed native populations by spreading infectious disease. While Nan and Kian show how, the, how it contributed to the Industrial Revolution and benefited numerous people in Europe, okay? And that one is, is probably the easiest way to do that one because you're just pulling stuff from the, uh, from the article, okay, or from the paragraphs. Okay, any questions on that response? That one's probably the most basic response, positive, negative, okay? There are a couple other ways you could have gone about it, okay? Richards has a very different view of Columbia Exchange than Nan and Kian. Richards examines the more immediate effects of the Columbia Exchange, whereas Nan and Kian take a more long-term view. So in this interpretation, I went immediate versus long-term. Okay? Richards explains how native populations were devastated by pandemics immediately upon the arrival of the, of the Europeans, while Nan and Kian explain how the crops from Americas helped Europe's population grow. I guess I would add to that over time. It led to long-term economic growth, okay? You good on that one, does that make sense? How I went short-term, long-term, okay? There's one more um, way you could have done this. You could have done this um, social versus economic, okay? So in this particular one, I said that uh, Richards looks at social effects, whereas Nana can look at economic effects, okay? Richard discusses how Native American societies were negatively impacted by diseases brought over by Europeans, while none can explain how European economies grew exponentially because of the products of the New World. Okay, now how do we feel about that? Anybody feel like they 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 got the point? Yes. Seeing some heads. Good. Good. Um, did anyone take a different um, viewpoint that you'd like to share? You don't have to share. I know people shy and all but if you want to if you want to share yours if you took a different perspective i would really like to hear it anybody all right we don't have to share if you don't want to but i if i would be interested to see another perspective on on that one 
All right, so um, let's go back and look at B. Now, B on this one is always going to be, it's gonna, you're going to need to pull a vocab term that supports Richard's interpretation. And you're going to need to pull a, uh, a specific vocab term for none and Kian's. I'll give you an example of those real quick, and then we'll move on to number two. So I think we got, yeah, we got like 20 minutes left. Okay, so here's my explanation for, for B. One specific historical event or development not mentioned in the excerpt that supports Richard's interpretation is the widespread disappearance of native peoples. Okay, because they're asking you to pull something that's not mentioned in the excerpt. Okay, um, my example here is going to be smallpox and influenza. Okay, I, I mean, it doesn't say in there, it just says uh, pandemics, but specific diseases, you can pull those. Okay. And then your explanation, you're going to say that because of those diseases, it allowed the Spanish to conquer the region. Okay. Um, C, you're going to give the example I, I used here was the transatlantic trade system and the systems of mercantilism, okay, which you guys should have learned about last year transatlantic trade and mercantilism. The New World provided raw materials for European powers to create products while labor came from Africa in exchange for these manufactured goods. Okay. All right. So, uh, how do we feel about question one? It is, in my opinion, the hardest one of the three. So when you're doing these, I would do this one last. I had so many students when we did mock short answer questions last year that would do number one and spend about 20 minutes on it and then only have 10 minutes each on the other two questions. Don't do that. Okay? Don't, don't spend too much time on this question. Okay. Any questions or comments on on? Question number one, type it in the chat and I can address those, okay? Otherwise, I'm gonna move on to question number two. And I'm also recording this in case anybody needs to go back and look at anything. Okay, question number two. Uh, this one is always gonna be a primary source, okay? It's gonna have an image, most likely it's gonna have an image, um, a chart or a map of some sort. So here's question number two. And for this one, I'd like you to um, answer, um, you can answer B on this one, okay? So looking at the picture, I want you to answer letter B. Briefly describe one specific historical effect of the event depicted in the image on Native Americans. So give me one specific historical effect of this image. And I'll go ahead and give you five minutes to answer this one, and then we'll discuss, okay? So try letter B.
All right, uh, about 20 seconds left. What I'd like you to do is in the chat, I'd like you to type what your effect was. So I'd like to see what your effects were. Just just the vocab term you chose for the site or your, whatever your effect would be. So go ahead and type that into the chat. I wanna see what some of your responses were. Okay, I'm seeing a trend here. <laughs> good. Okay. All right, good, good. Awesome. Let me show you an example of a, a, a possible response. Okay, one specific historical effect that led to the events uh, depicted is the conquering of the Aztecs by the Spanish. So in this particular um, answer, I use the effect of the Aztecs being conquered. Okay, the example is going to be the smallpox, like you guys chose, good. And um, mentioned in there that, you know, the Europeans, many of them had already developed immunities, okay? Here's where you get the point by using the explain here. Although the Aztecs had much greater numbers than the Spanish and were a formidable foe. Remember, they were arguably as good as, or if not better, warriors. They began to die off rapidly when they came into contact with the Spanish who carried the smallpox virus. This allowed Cortez to conquer the Aztecs when he didn't have the manpower to actually accomplish this. Okay, so here you're showing a, a very complex understanding of that. Okay. Good. I like that trend. That's a good, good response there. So the, the, the diseases allowed them to conquer cities like Tenochtitlan. Exactly. So Cortez having the ability to, to conquer that is, is good. Excellent. Okay, so um, are we good on that? All right, last type of question you're gonna get is a non-stimulus question here. Um, this one here is an example of a causation one where you're, at, you're going to answer one specific historical cause of Spanish exploration, one effect of Spanish policies, and then a second historical effect. Okay, and there's an example of non-stimulus. I'm gonna decide here which one I want you to do. Um, all right, so I will have you do, 
Let's do B here for this one here. So briefly explain one specific historical effect of Spanish policies toward Native Americans during the period between 1492 and 1600. So go ahead and answer B. I'll give you five minutes. We'll share and then we'll be pretty much done. One specific historical effect of Spanish policies.
Okay. All right. So here is what I came up with for letter B. So let's see how this compares to what you did. Uh, one specific historical effect of Spanish policies towards Native Americans during the period between 1492 and 1600 is the use of African slaves to farm plantation. Okay. As the Spanish conquered the Native Americans, they would enslave them in their encomienda systems. There's a vocab term I used to work on their sugar plantations. However, the Native Americans started to die off too fast because of diseases and brutality of the Spanish. Okay. Um, when this happened, the Spanish needed a new source of labor. They turned to Africa and set the precedent of using African slaves to work their plantations. When the British colonized North America in the 17th century, they will also use African slaves to work on their plantations. Now, this is like a really well-developed, long answer, um, but essentially you got encomienda system here as your vocab term, and the idea that the effect of these policies eventually led to African slavery. Anybody want to share before we go what they used for their letter B here on this one? Um, this one, there's, there's lots of things you could have gone with because it's a historical effect of policies. Um, uh, for A, uh, basically one historical cause, I always think of the three G's, God, gold, glory, um, and you could have used all sorts of different things for B, okay? All right, so those are your, those are your questions. Any, any questions or comments on short answer questions here? Hopefully that gave you a pretty good explanation of what um, we're looking for this year. Now, remember this year, you're only doing one per, per homework. Okay. So we're going to try to give you a variety of different types uh, in, in your homework. So make sure you're definitely doing the, uh, the short answer question in the worksheet. And then at some point, usually in our final exam for the semester, we usually do a mock short answer. Um, we may do one earlier than that to give you a kind of a timed writing. We don't do a lot of timed writings because you get a lot of those in English. So um, hopefully that helps with the explanation here uh, for short answer questions. And then if there's nothing else, um, that's it for today. Make sure you get your chapter two uh, quiz done, get your assignments turned in, and I will see you guys, I guess, on Wednesday. All right.